Kia ora koutou. Welcome to Whiteboard Friday, or as we say in Te Wiki o Te Reo Māori, Papa Mā Rāmere. And this week we're going to be looking at the healthy star rating system. So you might be seeing these stars popping up on foods in your supermarkets, trying to give you some guidance about which products are healthier if you're trying to decide between two. So of course five stars is the gold standard. Uh, but it's been criticised this week for really giving a health halo to sugary foods and perhaps encouraging us to eat more sugary foods than we should be eating. Is that the case? Well, we'll take you through some examples in this Whiteboard Friday so you can decide for yourself. But the real issue is this. The healthy star rating needs to take a really complicated thing like nutrition and scrunch it down into one judgment, one judgment out of five stars, how healthy is a food. That means it needs a model behind it and that model has to be based on science. It's weighing up lots of positives and negatives about any food. Some food, foods have good stuff in them and bad stuff in them, particularly packaged foods. And you've got to try and condense that down into one star rating. So it's not an easy thing to do. Let's have a look at our favourite example, New Zealanders. Milk, the backbone of our economy. So if we start off with whole milk, of course, on an energy level, uh, this is the amount of uh, kilojoules per 100 mils that, uh, that uh, milk has. Saturated fat, uh, reasonably high. Uh, sugar, you might be surprised to see that there's sugar in naturally occurring milk, but that is, that is lactose, it is, uh, appears in cow's milk. Protein, quite high. Of course, there's no fiber. That comes out with four stars. So you might be surprised it doesn't get five stars. Isn't it a natural food? Well, yes, but it's also quite high in saturated fat. So the model uh, penalizes it for that. But trim milk, of course, overcomes that by taking out the saturated fat. Uh, that pops up the, uh, the sugar slightly, but the, the protein increases even more, and it comes out of the model with five stars. So trim milk as the gold standard. But of course, then uh, companies start to add stuff into it to try and make us drink more. Chocolate milk is a good example. So it's higher in the energy, a little bit higher in the saturated fat. It's kind of a, a, a medium uh, trim milk. Uh, and of course, it really a lot bigger in the sugar stakes. So uh, 9.4 uh, uh, grams of sugar per 100 mils. That is you know, not quite as much as Coca-Cola, but it's certainly an extra uh, two and a half teaspoons per glass of sugar uh, in, a, in a glass of milk. That's more than my dad puts in his cup of tea. Uh, protein. Slightly higher than whole milk, no fiber, and it comes out as four stars. So this healthy star rating model is saying, telling us that chocolate milk uh, comes out uh, about the same as whole milk. And there will be a whole lot of people, uh, particularly the anti-sugar advocates out there, who that really incenses because whole milk is a, is a natural food and chocolate milk to some is an abomination. But we're trying to weigh up between bad, uh, you know, bad nutrients here, a bit more sugar and a bit less saturated fat. The model says it comes out the same. And that's based on the latest science. That may change over time. Uh, and we'd certainly expect to see sugar increasingly get penalized in, the, in this model as the science develops. And then, of course, we food companies can really start to use this model to work out, to, to game it, to play the system, to try and work out how to get five stars. And a good example there comes from our mates at Sanitarium Up and Go. Uh, the low sugar version of Up and Go uh, manages to get uh, five stars. So how does it do that? Well, uh, it's about the same on energy as, uh, as chocolate milk. Uh, it's uh, lower on the saturated fat steaks. Uh, it is much lower in the sugar than uh, chocolate milk. In fact, it's about the same as whole milk. Uh, but it actually uh, achieves that by putting in something called maltodextrin, which is almost like a sugar, but doesn't technically count as a sugar. Uh, on the protein states, it's a little bit higher. Uh, sorry, 3.4. Uh, and that it achieves that through something called soy protein isolate. Uh, it's higher on the fiber. They put in a bit of something called inulin. Uh, although it's advertised up and go as being all the goodness of two wheat bix plus milk, there isn't actually any wheat bix in here. They use a fiber called inulin. Uh, and that comes out as five stars. Now, 
To people who argue uh, that we should just eat whole foods, they probably see this as a Franken food. But coming out of the Healthy Star rating system, the, the low sugar version of Up and Go certainly gets five stars. There's no easy answers with this stuff. Uh, it is, as you can see, it's in, it's quite complicated. Uh, but the main thing we'd say about the say about the Healthy Star rating uh, system is that to work, it really needs to be compulsory. It needs to be on all foods. People need to be taught about how it works. Uh, the people who are who might argue over these ratings probably are, you know don't need the ratings themselves. This is designed for people who are in a real hurry and or don't have much. Uh, literacy over what's a healthy food and need to make quick decisions. But the main thing I would say is that people need to be educated that anything that any food that's not packaged, fruit and veg and meat and all that sort of stuff, actually is healthier than anything inside a package. Real food is what we should be eating. That's the message that, the, that we should be putting across to people. Anything that comes in a packet and has a star rating on it is probably going to be inferior.